Hi, I'm Stacy with Stacy Swallen Associates, and I am here with Robert Hill with Hawthorne Bank today. Today, we're going to talk about appraisals and appraisal gaps and what those mean in this crazy, um, silly real estate market that we are going through right now. So, Robert, can you tell our first time home buyers what an appraisal is and why it is needed? Yeah, uh, so uh, an appraisal, what it does is it gives a property valuation to the uh, home that you're wanting to make a purchase on. So to make sure that the value was there and to make sure that the home buyer is not overpaying for that property. So, okay. And those are done by certified licensed appraisers, appraisers here in town. Um, and then we're also seeing on contracts where buyers are um, not having their appraisal contingency. They're waiving their appraisal contingency. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're not getting an appraisal. It just means that they're waiving that, which entails that if they are waiving their appraisal contingency, it's still being appraised, mm -hmm. but they just have to have funds to cover that appraisal. That's correct. The sales price and what it appraises for. Correct. Just because they're waiving the appraisal contingency on the contract doesn't right. mean that an appraisal is not being done. So we can still do that appraisal to determine what the valuation is and, and then, um, if it's not as much as the purchase price, well then the borrower right. have to make up the difference or rene renegotiate with the seller, but if there's no appraisal contingency, they're not gonna renegotiate. Right, so then we're also seeing contracts come through where they have appraisal gaps. So can you tell us, explain to us what an appraisal gap mm -hmm. is? So let's uh, use round numbers here. So say a property is listed for 100,000 and your buyer wants to offer 125, uh, and an appraisal comes back at 100 what the list price was, well then the borrower is going to have to have the $25,000 in assets to cover that gap in addition to any down payment funds, down payment and uh, So what the difference in not having your contingency and having the appraisal gap is if you do the, waive in your appraisal contingency, you may have more funds. When you have your appraisal gap, you've got, you can actually limit how high it is versus you know, you if it's That's twenty five right. twenty five thousand yeah. dollars, or mm -hmm. if you waive it, it might be fifty thousand dollars, which you have. So you might have more funds to to waive that appraisal contingency. That's correct. Versus yes. the appraisal gap, you are actually tapping it out at a certain number. Right. So if the borrower only has twenty five thousand in assets mm -hmm. available, that's the biggest gap that we can mm -hmm. cover. Okay. So let's say they are, they wanted to offer 130, but they don't have the funds to cover that. Well, then they wouldn't be approved. As a loan officer, are you seeing more contracts come in waiving a contingency, the appraisal contingency, or are you seeing more um, contingency gaps? I have seen more of them waiving the contingency. Because they have the... Because they have the funds and they really want that house. They may have missed out on three or four offers already and they're tired of missing, they're just waiving the contingency. So you just have to make sure you have those funds available to cover that. That's correct. Yep. All right. Well, there, that is the explanation of appraisals and appraisal gaps. So we thank Robert for sitting with us this morning. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.